Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. If you are a new subscriber, there is a lot of material that you are likely trying to get through. So I can recommend to you that you can look through the playlist. The playlist is where prophecies are listed by theme. There are quite a few themes such as the invasion of the United States by Russia and China in the last days. There are over 25 prophecies like that. There is what I call the medical playlist, but that cannot be found here on YouTube. You can only find it on my alternate channels on Rumble, BitChute, and Brighteon. The medical playlist is basically everything that the Lord spoke concerning the 2020 covid shutdown of the world what was that about what was the coming of the harm in the arm that people were taking about and so those prophecies can no longer be hosted here because of youtube's privacy policies and things like that so they were moved over a year ago i think and you can only find them on alternate channels i will try to leave the um, links for you if you want to watch that those also are more than 20 prophecies there is the supernatural playlist if you have been going through political prophecies and other things like that and you have not taken a look at the supernatural playlist because you think what does this have to do with christianity please understand that it has a lot to do with christianity people in the world are very well versed some of them are ufo heads and they've been studying um nephilim and things like that for years because that's their interest and they out there in the world are not aware of or they may not understand how these issues link very strongly to christianity but they do however in the church there's little to no teaching about that i myself haven't been doing this work for as long as i have notice that as i've been doing it People are starting to come more and more into the knowledge of it in the church, but there's so many skewed perceptions. People are actually at this dangerous time in human history still asking, but what have the clones done that is so bad? And what would be so bad if we hooked up with a hybrid and things like that? Not knowing that in the ancient times, God's anger against all things that the devil created was so great that the Lord flooded the earth and cut off all life because to God, these creatures sowed corruption. To God, the existence of these creatures was corruption. What the fallen angels did was unacceptable to the heavenly father. And in his anger, he locks up the angels that transgressed with men and women in chains. And then he washed the earth of their offspring. But I have explained in the supernatural playlist that the Bible clearly says in Genesis chapter six, I think it is verse four, that there were giants in the earth in those days. And after that, after that tells you that there is no cut off period for the giants that came after the flood that the Lord revealed to me in various visions that they were not all wiped out, that there were various places that they could have and did hide, that they were extremely wise and crafty. After all, Enoch, the prophet, the holy man of God, brought them back word of their impending destruction. Do you think that they just sat there and cried, as the story says? After that, they rose up and they took steps. And so you can find all those things in the Supernatural playlist. There's two playlists. One is about fallen angels, one um, giants and Nephilim, and the other one is exclusively about aliens. And I will speak of that because this is just a small snippet that the Lord has moved me to make so that I set things in order as I am going forward. I am still in my fourth year of proclaiming the word of the Lord here on video, but in May, May of 2024, I would have hit and entered my fifth year. And if you look in the Bible, you will always see that it says, and Isaiah in his first year and Isaiah in his fourth year. I keep track so that I can know when and how God's work has been progressing. And so until I get to May 2024, I'm still in my fourth year, but I have covered so many topics. If you are new, I strongly advise you not to get tangled up in this blog. See a lot of people saying, I'm binging, I'm watching 10 a day, I'm watching 15 a day. Please understand, it has taken me time to absorb this work from God for 10 years. I was collecting and writing this stuff for 10 years. I was hearing him wake up and write this, wake up and see this, seeing visions at work and things like that. Be that as it may, 
the danger that you face when you watch these messages too fast is that you will become oversaturated. You might end up being strangely exhilarated. I see a lot of people euphoric and you are not understanding that you may be listening to truth that you've been searching for for a long time. Yes, that's true. But the reason this church, this truth is coming forward is because we are moving towards a certain time period. We are moving towards the time when God not only will judge, but God has judged. So if you're living in the United States of America, you are living in a judged nation. Do not listen to the people who are telling you that times will be great. Do not listen to the false prophets who are telling you like they lied to you that your favorite guy was going to be president and they wrote books about it and then all that failed and they took the videos down, they swallowed the videos and then you just absolved them of their lies as if you have the power to forgive false prophecy. Prophecy comes by the spirit of God. We mortal men do not have the power to tell human beings who are lying, using familiar spirits, speaking out of their own guts, speaking out of pride, speaking out of the fact that they like certain things. And so they, as the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 23, they prophesy a false message, but then they hope that the Lord will bring it to pass. As a human being, you don't have the right to tell someone it's okay when the person has come on camera, lied to you, deleted the evidence, and then you say, we're all human. You don't have the right to do that. People are playing very dangerous games. And so some people watching the messages are euphoric. They're very excited, but you are losing sight of the fact that this is a judgment blog. You get upset and where's the hope and where's the good news? God has not given me any good news to bring to you, America. And I'm not going to make some up because of public pressure. I said from my first video, I do not work for you. And at no time will my head ever be swayed to work for any man, woman, or child out there. I do not lack compassion, but compassion will never override my intense desire to be found faithful to God. There's no competition there. This is a judgment work. America is judged. She will pay her price. So if you are euphoric, temper it with wisdom, balance it out. I used to say all these things back then, and then I had to get on with the business of making the prophecies. Some people are depressed. That just goes to show you that you have no ballast on the inside. That just goes to show you that when you hear the true word of God's prophecy, it is fighting against all the false beliefs that you have. You falsely believe that the rapture was going to come early. You never thought that you would ever hear someone tell you that war would come to the nations while you were alive. But the only way that anyone is escaping the red horse the wars that are coming to this America, as well as many other nations out there. You have, you've been watching them for the last 12 to 14 to 16 months, bombing people in parts of Europe and then bombing people in the Middle East now. But that's always been a them problem, isn't it so? You never thought you would see someone in your lifetime come to tell you that you are not going to die in this country and be buried next to your whoever at Arlington. You never thought that you would see someone come to tell you that you are going outside these borders to sit in Mexico, Canada, Guam, Turkey, Lebanon, I saw. God says you will not get to go to the nice places. And the reason for that is because the Lord says until the very, very day that the wars of America come upon her, she will refuse to believe that any wars could come upon her. This is how Babylon thinks. I sit as a queen and I am no widow and I will see no dark days. These are words of assurance, complacency and pride. Who can ever bomb America? America of the strong military might, America of all the spy weaponry, America of superior firepower. Russia will and China will at an undisclosed time when no one is expecting it life will be lost here so when you when you get to those prophecies then they're heavy and people who don't have a solid foundation they now begin to do several things they begin to say that the prophecies are a lie prophecy cannot become a lie because you're scared 
It doesn't work that way. The human mouth has no power. The only tongue that is empowered is the tongue that knows how to use the word of God as a sword. That tongue is very powerful. Another tongue that is empowered is the prophetic tongue. When a message is placed in a prophet's mouth and that message is proclaimed, hell no high water, tears nor euphoria can turn back that word. The Lord has set a word in my mouth and it has fallen upon not only this nation, but many other nations that have been mentioned here over the course of the four and a half years that I have been here on video so far. Video is more useful. Video gets shared faster. You cannot turn back the prophetic word because you are afraid, because you think it is hateful. It is impossible for Jesus Christ to be hateful. Jesus Christ is love. Jesus Christ is joy. Jesus Christ is peace. But in all those things, Jesus Christ is not one dimensional. He is not someone who looks at sin and smiles. He is not someone who can simply overlook a nation that has put into law that it is okay to butcher babies or dissolve babies in the womb through pills. And now the dissolving is so easy that you can get the abortion pills mailed to your door. What are we thinking? That God will continuously overlook? That God will just keep flipping through the scrolls and saying, well, if my people, there's no repentance. The nation is overtaken in trespass. She is full of evil. And the more the evil is exposed, the angrier the people get because there's no repentance in the general soul in this nation. There's no sorry. It's just self-defense. Well, what did I do? And why are you judging us? The Lord judges you, America. You will scatter to the four corners of this earth. You will lose ownership of this land. It will be taken from you very roughly. You will have to go and live where you, where you can go. Nothing will change. It doesn't matter if you have children. It doesn't matter if you're young and you've got your whole life ahead of you and you think, well, I don't believe this. Nothing you can say will change that. This judgment is set in Revelation 18 and it will come to pass. It is people who are in the middle, balanced and tempered. It is possible for you to come into the middle even if you have absolutely no foundation in the word of God, even if you are scared. When these prophecies came upon me, I have asked before and no one can give an answer. Who do you think I went to? What did you think YouTube was offering in 2012 when the Lord began to unload these messages on me? What pastor do you think was prepared to say, well, these dreams sound a little, let me work through them. I went to no one. I sat with the Lord and I heard his message and strength was given to me through hearing the message. The people who have been here since the beginning are very strong now. Very, very strong. They may have moments of indecision and times when fear will try to pounce upon them. But hearing the word of the Lord carried them to the first step, which was accepting the charges that God has brought against the United States. And then they moved to the second step, which was repenting for personal sin. And then the third step, repenting for the nation's sin. And now they are settled. Their feet are upon the rock. The camera goes on and they don't have a problem with it. If you are new, you will never be able to go through this process instantly. It will take time. It will take laying down of your opinions. It will take much stripping. God will make you naked here. But the blessing is that he will clothe you with cleaner clothes than when you came. If you are willing. The test of prophecy is simply, can you discern the spirit of the Lord when he is speaking to you? And then come the other tests. Is it coming to pass? Is it happening as you were told? And if you're new, then obviously you weren't here when you were told, but the people who were here know. And so I have the Lord's points here. The first one is that fulfillments belong to God. Timing of fulfillments, actions of fulfillment. So the timing means when will the prophecy come to pass? I don't give dates here. You watch the prophecies, you will always hear me say, I received this prophecy on. 
that is the 3 a.m. that is the 5 p.m. during a meeting that the Lord will start talking to me and I'm writing and I look like I'm writing notes but I'm actually writing the prophecy so the date I give is the date I get it the date I get it is different from the date I make it some of the prophecies I'm making are three years old I finally got to them now to put them on video they haven't happened yet so if you hear something and you're like, well, why doesn't this happen yet? Why hasn't this happened yet? Prophecy is not a bagel. You don't just bake it and then it's there. The original men who prophesied in the Bible have been dead for centuries. We're still waiting for their prophecies to come to pass. You simply have to have more maturity than that. You simply have to have more maturity than that. So the timing that the prophecy will come to pass that is God's business. The action of the prophecy, that is who will do the prophecy. This addresses all the tongues. She's cursing us. How can one person sitting in an apartment in New York City curse an entire nation? Like, what's happening? What are you watching? What are you reading? Where are you getting this from? Is it the video game that told you that when a person puts on the camera and say something, then boom, it happens? If that's true, why don't you put your camera and simply say, I have a million dollars, and then wait for it to come to your house the next day? If that is how the tongue works. As I just said, the power in the tongue is when it is empowered by God. When warlocks curse you, and you have the power of the Holy Spirit in your mouth, and you break that curse, you defend against it. You have an unholy dream someone trying to sleep with you in the dream, a creature pinning you down in the dream and you can't speak, someone feeding you in your dream. That's witchcraft and initiation. But when you wake up like a responsible believer and you begin to cut with a double-edged sword in your mouth, then obviously Satan's plans for you will fall to the ground. If someone just speaks and there is no power and authority in it, then nothing will happen. But if someone has been telling you reluctantly, it was against my will to come on this camera and talk about aliens in 2021, right in the middle of the year when I was working on another prophecy series, Mystery Babylon and the sins of America, the Lord began to press on my heart. Don't resist me. Tell them about the aliens. And I said, Lord, who? I'm not ready. I'm not ready for that set of prophecies. And he told me they have to know. And so right in the middle of the year, it would either be June or July, 2021, I started talking about a creature I had no personal knowledge of. I saw the word written in front of me, W-E-N-D-I-G-O, Wendigo, some kind of Native, America, Native American, tall, evil looking spirit dog. Go back and look at those prophecies. Look at my face and see if I look skippy to be talking about aliens. The Lord pushed me into that prophecy series. And since 2021, I have been telling you that they will come. Is it my tongue that is causing people to be sprinting at the Miami Mall now, talking about portals and holes? Didn't I tell you that the sky was going to start dissolving and these creatures were going to come through? Didn't I tell you at the request of the Lord that the dimensions are smashing together because those people are playing with CERN. Do you not know that when dimensions smash together, instead of having the thin slice, when you go to the nice cake shops and the cakes are sliced, they put a piece of waxed paper together so the cake will not smoosh back together again, so that each person gets a nice clean piece. The dimensions are separated by some kind of membrane that stops them from mushing together, but they're smashing together now because people are playing with hadron colliders and playing with time-space continuums, things that God talks to me about. I have no nuclear physicist degree. I'm not claiming to be an expert on them, but as I've said, I'm an expert on listening with my mouth closed and writing things down and then reading the things that I've written down back to people who can't seem to keep their mouth closed. But that is your free will. God says they're messing with time. They're messing with space. That's why the dates feel shorter. And he said, why are you surprised when the Bible says that for his love for us, for the sake of those who are the true elect, the days would be shortened. How did you think they were going to be shortened? Did you think that God had a sardine key and he was going to wind them shorter? God knew 
that evil would be manipulating time. But God also knew that he can use anything to the fulfillment of his will. That's why the days are falling so quickly. That's why it seems as if we're running to catch up and there isn't enough time. That you're not sleeping enough, but your watch still tells you that you got eight hours. Since 2021, I've been saying this. But now that it is coming forward, is it my mouth or was it the declaration of the Lord that has people sprinting left and right in Miami? And no matter how many times I warn, I have also prophesied this. People will not listen. People will go to these creatures because people love what is unholy. People love what is ungodly. People will defend getting to know these creatures. People will defend opening up human society to these beings because that is people's nature. People want what is different. They want what is new. You've already seen human beings and you've already seen animals, but you've never seen a human being mixed with an animal. You only read about it in the Greek and the Norse mythology. So now that the horseman is your neighbor, how exciting. Let's take a pie over, honey. That is what society is going to be like in this America. And they will mix and they will blend Daniel 2 and 43. And they will think to mingle themselves with the seed of men. They will blend into, this, into our societies. And yes, women and men will give themselves up to be their partners in marriage and covenant. And they will bring forth the creatures. You have heard all these things. I wasn't making prophecies and sticking a picture of Captain America on them for nothing. Fulfillment of timing belongs to God. Whenever these things will come to pass, God knows, but they have to be prophesied so that you can make a choice. Don't lose sight of the fact that this entire blog is before you for you to understand that judgment is coming and that you must choose on every topic who you will serve. In 2022, I declared to everyone who was listening that right now, what we are talking about, in fact, since 2021, when I began to cover hybrids, I said that the topics people fight about now is, well, is trans okay or not okay? And, and, and homosexuality, people are rephrasing what the scriptures say. The scriptures are so clear, but then people are, are creating new scriptures. Be on the right side of history, they say. And love is love and God is love. So then God is that love that is same, same. I said, that is what is tearing society apart now, but the time is coming. You will see the protests in the street will be, we don't want the blended hybrid people to come to the schools. You think you're watching the movies, you are actually watching your future that you pay money for. You pay money for them to tell you what they will do. And then there's a contingent that says, no, it won't happen. It will happen. And you must accept not only will it happen, but God will allow it to happen because the Lord says that the judgment of an unclean human race, a human race that will not stop touching itself, a human race that will not stop touching children, a human race that is now sleeping with animals, the judgment for the wicked, the Lord says, is to have the other wicked come upon us. That's right. Out of the portals, they will come pretending to be brothers, pretending to be friends, pretending to bring technology. The greedy America will want, run forward. You can heal cancer. The government will turn and say, who doesn't, who doesn't want cancer to be healed? All the cancer people will say me. In this nation, the end justifies the means. So these things, timing of them, when they will happen, belongs to God, but also the action of them. That means the actual thing happening belongs to God. And so it was years ago I prophesied that the 911 calls are going to change. And they will change. And the 911 people will quit and go and become gardeners because they never again want to hear that voice on the phone eat a person as the person was making their report. And then the voice will say, we have come. And then the voice will hang up. 911 lady doesn't want that smoke. She's going to quit the job and she's going to go home and look after her grandchildren. Fulfillment and action belong to God. No dates are given here. 
Only the prophecy is given here. And then you, along with me, we will wait and see whether you believe it or not now, what the Lord will do. There are only two groups. Those who believe when the prophecy is spoken, when the Lord says, now I tell you before it come, so that when it come, you may believe. So there are people who will discern that the Lord is indeed bringing this information forward, whether it's something you've ever heard before or not. They won't call it witchcraft. They won't call it she copied it. Who on earth and how on earth? Who, where, where was the place that I copied these hundreds and hundreds of truths with Bible verses? To copy, there must be a source. Where is the source? that these messages meticulously dated and titled each one. And then there is those who believed when the word of God is fulfilled. This is people in the world who may not even know of the prophecy and then come to find out that the prophecy was there before the fulfillment. And so one of the things that has been on my heart to talk about even before this has happened is the warlock, the wizard, the marine pastor, TB Joshua. So here we are now. It is two years. Two years since you were warned. Two years since you were told to stop following and watching TB Joshua's broadcast. In January 5th, 2021, the Lord listed names of people that he was going to take away. One of them was TB Joshua. T.B. Joshua lost his life shortly after that. People wept for that man. They cried. A son of God, they said. A mighty leader fallen in the earth, they said. And yet, that man was in depths of witchcraft, depths of occultism. This is drawing power from another realm. He is being exposed now by BBC, for all the people who fall into group two, people who only believe when the prophecy fulfilled. So I'm getting tagged on TikTok now. He's being exposed by, by the BBC, but I did not need the BBC to tell me who he was because the Lord said that TB Joshua was a warlock. He was a high ranking warlock, the type they call a mage. This is when a magician has risen to the highest possible level that you can go. There's nowhere else. The only thing that you can do after that is to become a fallen angel yourself. This is the highest of the arts, the deepest of the knowledge. I'm not going to watch any documentary because there's no need to. This man was deep in the Marine Kingdom. This man had the power to astral project. His acolytes constantly defended him and defend him still as a man of God. Why? Because they dreamed of their papa. The only problem is that papa was in your dreams through astral projection. And when people come into your dreams through astral projection, they most often are sowing captivity and death. Simultaneously sometimes or pretty consecutively one after the other. They rob you spiritually. You should not have people prancing through your dreams without purpose. If the Lord wants to deliver a message to you, he can use a face. But what is that face doing? What is that face telling you? When I began to bring out these revelations, oh, the backlash, the rage. How dare you touch the anointing of God? The anointed, touch not my anointed. Church of Jesus Christ, do you know what the anointing is? The anointing is the living power of the, Holy, of the Holy Spirit. In the old days, it was represented by the pouring of oil upon the vessel God had chosen. The king, the priest, the prophet. The oil had to be poured to symbolize that the Holy Spirit had come. And the Holy Spirit would now be in charge of the vessel. The anointing is the presence of the Spirit himself. Let's ask ourselves let us reason one to another can the holy spirit come upon a warlock can the holy spirit come upon one who conducts human sacrifice in his church the building collapses more than 100 souls lose their life 
his altar beneath the sea becomes watered with fresh blood. What is the reward for the blood he has given? More power uplifting in the dark realm. Can the anointing co-sign that? If the anointing, who is Christ himself as spirit? If the anointing cannot co-sign that, please tell me, why do you co-sign it? Why do you, as the book of Jeremiah says, why do you weep for Tammuz? Why do you cry when God comes and plucks the witches and the warlocks out of our midst? Why do you sob when you have lost death in the midst? When God exhibits love and removes the wicked, why do you cry for them? Why do you sob as if you have been robbed of your ancestral property? Because you don't love God. You do not love God. You love men. You love lies. You love deception. You want to fulfill 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 to 12 in its fullness. You must complete your role on earth. No matter how many false prophets will show up in exposés, like Eddie Long showed up in an exposé. Because the young men could not take their problem to the church. They were not listened to. They were shushed. They were called liars. How can you touch the anointed of God? And so the secular press, whom I have prophesied, will rip every last covering off your favorite pastors and put them on front street. The secular press has to do the work of the church. The church will not hear an accusation against an elder, even if the elder is swimming in the sea and serving the dragon principality as TB Joshua was doing. And so it takes London to expose Africa's sin and how they will rage, how they will cry. But you were told from this small apartment to stay away from the devil, but you would not. And even now when the truth is coming out, you will fight for your idol. It is a sin to love your bonds. It is a shame to love your captivity. It is a sin to rise up and defend what cannot be defended. When God has judged something, then you jump in front and say, not so, not so. Death shall not be spoken. He shall live many more years. But will he? Did he? And will they? The answer is no. When Jesus opens the door, it stays open. But when he shuts the door, it stays shut. And so, the word that was prophesied here, that it was God who took TB Joshua out of this earth, just as he will take many more, God says that you will be robbed of your idols, you will have no one to worship, he will take away the movie stars, he will take away the music stars, he will take away the singers, he will take away the sports icon, he will take away all the top pastors. There's a small snippet, snippet with that, um... I can't remember the name of that prophecy, but I think it was from 2021. I will post it in the description box or leave it as a comment. The Lord says that when you have no one to worship, no Trump, no Beyonce, no TD Jakes, when you have no Joyce Meyer, when he has taken them all away, he said you will have nothing to do but sit on the ground and go back to your Bible and learn how to worship him. He will rob you of idols. I brought the message here where the Lord says that there are many in the earth, human beings who have risen above their station. I had the vision where they were turning in the heavens. They were turning with their arms outstretched, pastors and leaders and singers, the highest of the highs, the stars. They had ridden right, risen right, right into the space that belongs to Jesus. They had risen into the heavens and the Lord was enraged to see mankind humanity, dust, dirt, rising up into the space that belongs to the immortals. He gave a command and the angels came and they began to push them out of the heavens, the luminaries, the stars, the bright lights, and they began to fall and shatter on the ground. Benny Hinn, T.D. Jakes, Beyonce, I saw them fall. Unless you, their fan, can rise into heaven and keep them there, you will see the funerals, and I will come and complete the word of the Lord 
against those who have risen against their station. The prophecy that was given that God will dig up the dead bodies and expose your sin can be found in Jeremiah chapter 8. I read it for you now. At that time, says the Lord, they will bring out the bones of the kings of Judah, the bones of its princes, and the bones of the priests, the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. They will spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven, which they have loved and which they have served and after which they have walked, which they have sought and which they have worshiped. They shall not be gathered nor buried. They will be like refuse on the face of the earth. Then death will be chosen rather than life by all the residue of those who remain of this evil family, who remain in all the places where I have driven them, says the Lord of hosts. And what God is saying here is that when you die and your sin is secret, when you die and people are singing songs of what a great man he was, what a gift to the earth, what a blessed woman she was, we are poorer because she has left. Even when God has judged, you sing the songs and the praises of the wicked. So God will go back to the burial site and they will bring up the bones of the princes, of the religious leaders, of the stars. The Lord says even the inhabitants. This prophecy will continue. Even the grandfather that molested his granddaughter and his grandson, who was buried because the family was hiding the sin. Years later, those children will talk and it will cause a bombshell in the family. Even in quiet and small families, the dead will be dug up. Their sins will be exposed. Like the man who was a serial killer shortly after I gave the prophecy called the end of the way of the wicked. And I said that no cold case will remain cold. Jesus Christ is going to warm them up like yesterday's leftovers and they will become smoking hot. And even if you are dead, your crime will make the news. A few weeks after that, a woman who fulfilled exactly what the prophecy said, that people's hearts will begin to become burdened and heavy and twisting with guilt. One of the man's daughters called the sheriff and she confessed that when they were just about nine and 10 years old, their father systematically murdered almost 15 women out of town prostitutes that he would pretend he wanted to sleep with. And then he would murder them for his own sick and twisted reasons and then force his children to help him bury them chopped up in a well. One daughter couldn't take it and she talked. While the other daughter, ashamed of what they had done, strongly denied that anything had happened. But they found the well. The only problem was the sheriff said, well, it's an old crime. And he was acting like old crimes don't need resolutions. He was acting like the chopped up limbs in that well that had probably turned to bone because the father who killed them lived his whole life non-caught. He lived his whole life free. But those women in the well had mothers and fathers who were wondering where they were. Jesus Christ will uncover all the dirt from the white house down to the little house on the prairie. TB Joshua exposed. You have heard the word of the Lord. After two years, it has finally come on the news. But now the question is, will you believe it? Or will you continue to tune into the Scoen broadcast that is bringing out those dragon principality fumes into your house? Choose this day who you will serve. The other verse that I will read from you for you here concerns the prophecies that have been made against religious leaders, that have been made against superstars, that have been made against... All those whom God has said he will judge with death. That prophecy is called the burial of Tophet. It has two parts. In one part, God says that the judgment against the United States of America will be so harsh that there will be vast loss of life here, partly because people don't believe anything when they hear it. And so they won't move. Even though you can see the rich people moving, isn't it strange? The rich people are sniffing something in the air that the ordinary people will say, what did the kids say? No cap. They will say it's cap. They will say it's a lie. It's not true. She's making all of it up. But somehow the people with money 
are leaking out of this place like water out of a leaky bucket, that contingent, as well as the wise, those are the people that the Lord says, yes, you will get to move at your own pace. You will talk with your children. You will pray. You will hear the word of the Lord for yourself. You will not ask me because I am not a travel agent and I don't offer anyone that kind of advice. You will seek God with all your heart and he will be found of you when you seek him with everything. He will tell you what the plan is, stay or go. But there is a contingent that will get to leave of their free will. Those people will get to take assets. Those people will get to take money. They will get to ship things, I guess, their favorite things. And then there's people who are just going to leave with a cloth. I have a word for you. If you are from the nation of Ghana, during the time that I have been away from the blog, the Lord was telling me, tell them who come from Ghana, tell them who come from all the West African countries, but particularly Ghana. The Lord says that if you are wise, you will seek him to know what to do. But if you are not right, wise, I let you know that I see you running in your colorful clothes because that is what the Lord does. He won't represent us in these westernized garbs. He will show you according to how and who you are. I saw the people of Ghana running with that distinctive orange cloth that they have racing out of this nation. When I say Speedy Gonzalez, racing, flying, whether you are a registered nurse, whether you are a doctor, you're a business owner, you scoff, you mock at the Lord's words. You say, hmm, I'm waiting to see how it will happen. Can you outweigh a civil war? Can you outweigh a Russian bomb? The Lord says that you will run out of here with your two feet and nothing. And so that is the word that I bring to you. May the Lord give you wisdom to understand how to navigate it. And so the burial of Tophet, the punishment of America, is that life will be lost here to the extent that God says they will not bury in this country. People will get tired of it. I brought that prophecy last, no, 2022, where God says that there will be so much death here First, people will go to funerals, and the Lord says that the funerals will begin to compete with one another. Whose funeral are you attending, your best friends or your father's? Who are you going to bury first, your husband or your son? The spirit of death will be unleashed in the land. It will be the judgment upon the land, Ezekiel chapter 9. Please read that. I have been speaking it for the entire four years. Death will be given a blank check in this land because that is what happens when judgment is there. Ezekiel 9 says that upon the elderly, upon the young, upon the nursing infant and the mother, death will come. The only person who was spared, the only people who made it in Ezekiel 9 are people who had a mark, excuse me please, upon the forehead. The mark of righteousness. People who weep and sigh over the sins of the land. So you hear the prophecies about what's happening to children. You hear the prophecies that they're snatching people in Mexico and trafficking them here. And people are buying them on a secret web internet. You hear the prophecies that, um, which one was it? I didn't give it a title. I was just sharing a little bit of my dream that they still do slave runs here. They still do mock slave runs, capture black people and loose them in the forest and then shoot them in expensive hunting boot shoes. That they are killing people here for the melanin in their skin and blending them and drying them like food. That the blood in the blood banks is put into smoothies and old people drink it to stay young. You hear these prophecies and then you just decide that all these things are not true because you say so. They're a lie. When you say that they're a lie, your shoulders are lighter. You breathe easy. I have discovered her secret. She's lying. And then you walk away and nothing changes. The things are still happening. They're still real. You're just ignorant of them because you have exited the chat. But some people hear these things and they're torn. They are torn to realize that they are living in Alcatraz mixed with hell, mixed with deception. And they cry out to God, oh God, how can it be? And as they labor before God, 
to absolve themselves of this filth that they are hearing. The mark is being shaded on the forehead of those people. It doesn't matter if you're 79 years old. If you are heartbroken by what you hear and you go into repentance and you go into prayer, lifting up your voice, not for the predators and the pedophiles in the pulpit, but for the victims who, because of power, have been suppressed and could not speak. Well, the mark is being shaded on your forehead. Regardless of age, regardless of sex. That is the first burial. The Lord says funerals will multiply in the United States until we get to a point as we go into prophecies of the fulfillment of the war and things like that, where we will not have energy to bury. Who's going to stop in the middle of a war to bury? Who's going to stop in the middle of the Kim Jong-un era? of the beast system to bury. They will leave people right there. They will leave their blood on the road right there. I wouldn't say it if I hadn't seen it. I wouldn't say it if it wasn't so, but it is so. And nothing is going to change that. The word is Jeremiah chapter seven. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, says the Lord. This is chapter seven and verse 30. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and daughter in the fire, which I did not command, nor did it come to my heart. That's abortion. Burning the children in the fire, that's trafficking. Burning the children in the fire. That's renting them out in secret coded messages on Facebook and Instagram so that their abusers can come by and give you a thousand dollars and then do things to your baby that will literally unhinge the baby's mind. That is if the child survives being rented out to pedos. That's what it means when a nation passes children through the fire, cutting them up for ritual purposes, eating them, aborting them, and then selling the fetuses to crunch up for blood so that you can have vampire facials. As if you think that the people who do this are actually using red beauty products. You buy the red beauty product products as a mockery. They use the real thing. Verse 32, behold, therefore the days are coming, says the Lord, when it will no longer be called Tophet, nor will it be called the valley of the son of Hinnom, but it will be called the valley of slaughter, for they will bury in Tophet until there is no more room. The corpses of this people will be food for the birds of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and no one will frighten them away. God is simply saying that when the time comes that the judgments fall, whether it's falling in the potter's house, no one will turn it away. Whether it's falling in TBN, no one will turn it away. Whether it's falling at some top NFL team losing three players in a season, no one will turn it away. Sudden political assassinations. Remember America, God has said that you have killed many presidents around the world. Why should you keep yours? There will be political instability, sudden death of leaders. And God says the same instability that you caused, for instance, in Haiti and many countries in Africa and South America by assassinating their presidents because you wanted their politics to go in the direction that favored you. God says the same instability will come here to America. The same price you caused other to, others to suffer, you will suffer. Just a moment, please. And so you are listening and you are hearing that the church will be afflicted and the church will go through exposés and pastors will fall. Pastors will fall in the pulpit. Pastors will be arrested as they are in the middle of their message. Pastors will be trending on social media for all the wrong reasons. These things have been told to you years in advance. And you're starting to see it now and you might have questions, but Celestial, why? I thought God loved the church. He does. He just doesn't love the sin. He doesn't love the people who fight for the sin, defend the sin, and say, touch not my anointed. When the person is not anointed, the person is a predator. The person has taken life. The person has committed murder because they wanted the church land that somebody else had. The person is so deep in scandal 
that God himself has decided not to redeem them, but to judge them and to make a public show of them so that the church can be warned and draw back from the wolves. But the church runs to surround the wolf and say, how could you? How could you? That's what God doesn't love. God doesn't love iniquity. Iniquity is a man's darkness. It's the things that go on in a man's heart when the people who think they know him because they watch him through their cell phone. When he's not coming through their cell phone, when they've gone to sleep and said, what a good word, as they've been drinking from the sewer of that defiled person. God sees that man. He sees where that man or woman goes. He sees who they keep company with. He sees what they do. He sees how they laugh and mock the sheep who are blind and drink from the sewer. And it infuriates God because God sees what goes on backstage. He sees the rituals. He sees the chants. He sees the CDs and the EPs, how they chant and they invoke Satan and they ask Satan to cause the lyrics to enter into your mind and cook you like a bowl of ramen. God sees and he is angry. And so he will allow you to see what you love so that you will learn never to love the sewer again. That is why the expose will come. The church is broken. The church is defiled. The church has lost her way. The church has forgotten who Jesus Christ is, how holy he is, and is so busy following the unholy that the church has forgotten that this man is going to come and test every heart. He's going to come and test every work. He's going to come and ask us to account for every word that has ever come out of our mouth without repentance. Those crimes will stick. But the church has forgotten that judgment begins at the house of God and she thinks she has more time and she's busy arguing about how, how can you say this? But Jesus is drawing near. And his words are a stench to those who are perishing, but it's a very fragrant perfume to those who realize that he is coming. His reward is with him, but there's going to be threshing and winnowing. First, the church is heavy with sin. She's compromised herself. And so God is going to allow the world, please listen, God is going to allow the world to shame the church. And if you are wise, now you understand how it is that in the B system we are hated and blamed for everything. For you can surely not think that after a wave of scandals and after all the 21-year-old boys have come out and cried about how they were vandalized when they were 9 and 10 and 14 looking for a father figure but ended up in a relationship with a full-fledged homosexual. After all that has happened, do you think that the world will love you? Do you think that the world will receive you? Do you think that because you are willing to cover sin a billion times over, do you think the world has that kind of patience? No. In the beast system, the church will be the scapegoat for everything, including the death of the dolphins. They will say, it's us. I've told you many times before, but there's a hearing problem outside my camera. When the edifice is shaken by God himself, when God exposes the pedophilia, the greed, the financial transactions, what really goes on on the private jets? Well, the world will have no respect for the church. The world will have no interest in this Jesus. And now you know why Jesus said, and persecution will arise for my sake. Because after all that, if you're still clinging to him and people ask you, what do you see in that? And you try to witness and evangelize. Well, won't you be hated by all men for his sake? Has the scripture lied? Are the prophecies inconsistent with anything in the Bible? Or is it that you just haven't put them together yet? And so you claim that the puzzle makes no sense. But to those who listen, the puzzle makes perfect sense. Every prophecy supports and witnesses the one that came before and the one that's on its way. And so, no more sitting on the fence. God is putting before us life and death, and everyone is going to choose where they're going to land, what they're going to support, how they're going to do it, 
If you're new to Christianity, don't be discouraged. God loves the babies. As long as the baby is humble, as long as the baby buys a Bible that it can understand, you don't need to send me email and ask me what Bible I'm reading. It's not the version of the Bible that I'm reading that made me this way. It was the fact that I loved it from the beginning. I loved it from the start. I loved the God in it. Even when he was killing the Girgashites and the Jebusites, and I didn't understand why. When I grew up, he explained to me that they were Nephilim. But I never left him because I thought he was brutal or cruel or judgmental. I loved him then. I love him now. The Bible was the roadmap. And that's where I walked out my love. And when he comes, he will find me walking it out still. Not like William Murphy, but on the narrow road. I'm going to leave some links for you. Um, you can speed up the videos. If you watch them at 1.25 speed, you can still hear me. You can watch the audios. There's podcasts. The podcast is a lot less distracting. You can listen to two. Do not listen to Nephilim prophecies at night. Don't listen to prophecies about aliens at night and then come on my comments and tell me that something attacked you at night. Please, let's be responsible. What did you think was going to happen? You're not a strong prayer warrior, maybe. You don't know how to cook your house in the lava fire of the Holy Ghost. Then you will go and listen to Nephilim at 2 a.m. And what do you think the demons are going to do? Of course, they're going to jump on you. You're going to have a bad dream. You don't have the power of the spiritual warfare. This is straight out of the New Testament. The sons of Sceva, they went to try a man with demons. They just thought they could just show up and say, in the name of Jesus, they thought that's all it took. Listen, church, please. Listen, new people. The name of Jesus is not a magic wand. You don't just go magic wand, magic wand, Jesus, Jesus. And then the de devil is like, oh no, you got me. No, it doesn't work like that. The name of Jesus has power because of relationship. Christ in you. That's the reason you name the name. So when you have not built up the Christ in you, and then you come up against these superior demons that have been out here working a minute and a half, and you just say, Jesus, especially when these creatures finally get back bodies. When they finally, finally achieve every demon's goal of finding a body. This is where the skin dress police report is going to come from. I've been saying it always. When these demons get bodies, weak people that they can take over, this is where fathers will be committing the most heinous crimes. And the police will come and find them and, and start crying, gagging crying on the broadcast. We found this in the house and the man will be standing at trial showing zero emotion. Why? Because the man is gone. The man has been suppressed to the very basement of his soul. And that demon is standing up tall and proud. That demon will be talking to the judge. That demon will be doing everything to manifest. Why? Because the work of any demon that manages to catch a person is to kill the person. You have suicide as an example. You have suicide as an example. Those demons just waste the body. When they waste the body, they go out and look for a new body. That's why I've told these young people that wicked statement, that wicked satanic pit of hell statement that is in your mouths. You should kill yourselves. You must repent if you ever typed that on anyone's social media, if you ever said that to anyone's inbox, if you ever even thought it, you must repent. Because that is a weaponized statement. There's demons that attach to those words and go out to your friends. And then you find out, oh, she did this. And the mother is crying, rolling, not knowing that you sent a knife to her baby, her only child, a father's only child, their one little love. You must repent and beg God for your soul because you young people are so wicked. When the Lord revealed to me what you guys do in 2022, I was, I was chastised in my spirit. 
I didn't know that people under the age of 20 could do such things, were capable of such acts. The Lord said that you young people, your generation is wasted, wasted, a waste. There's just a few of you clinging on for dear life, trying to find your way out of that pit of what you guys do. So I will leave some links and may the Lord bless you. And the Lord has instructed me um, to put together two compilation videos. And so I'm working on them. It takes a lot of time to find the right place to snip and cut and paste and everything. And so I've been working on both of them for some days. I hope to have at least one of them up and then the other one will come. Uh, one last thing, please, your understanding. Um, please do not be engaging with scammers in the comments, okay? This is a problem that I've been fighting for years and none of the social platforms do anything. There are people who will copy my icon and they will copy the name of the blog, but they will make a false name. They will jumble up the letters sometimes. If you don't see a dark band around the reply, then it's not me and it's not one of the moderators, please. I'm really here to respond to comments. And I just ask the moderators to keep the blog clean. You cannot hear and you come here and use profanity. No one is interested in your false prophecy accusation. Just take that to your bedroom and write a thesis. God bless you. Don't come here and use profanity. Don't come here and be disrespectful. The Lord asked me to prophesy. He didn't ask me to babysit and he didn't ask me to tolerate nonsense. So please don't engage with these people. Please don't send these people your wealth. Please stop sending money to Nigerian or orphanages that are telling you that they can see your future. You, you know for a fact that that is not me. Do not get scammed. Don't put your information on the internet. Just be careful of the times that we are in. And thank you to those of you who support the blog. May the Lord bless you and keep you and increase you all the more. I'm Celestial. And this is the Master's Voice Prophecy Blog. Until I see you again, goodbye.